Hi, this is Tzvi Gromit speaking from Pardes. Uh, speaking about the, uh, the Seder, turns out that what we have is a, what we call our Seder Pesach um, on uh, the first night of Pesach, or for some people on the first two nights of Pesach, um, has really two sources. The first source is based on, um, it's a reenactment or a recreation of the Pesach sacrifice, the Paschal sacrifice, that was done during the Second Temple times, in which people would gather around for a festive meal with a symbol of the Karban, the sacrifice, sitting right there at the table, retelling the story. That itself is actually a, is built on the foundations of the original Pesach in Mitzrayim as the Jews were preparing to leave. There's a second source for the Seder that we have, and that is a, um, a rich interactive experience in which there are questions being asked back and forth and discussions going on. These two, um, these two different sources create somewhat of a tension around the very nature of what the Seder is. And what I'd like to do, I would like to actually pose four questions for you to consider, for us all to consider, as we prepare for our own Seder. I'm not going to present answers, but I think the questions themselves can help to spark some thoughts as to what our Seder should look like. First, the structure of the Seder suggests that the Seder was originally a festive meal designed to spark dialogue. In teaching our children about the Seder, we undo some of that puzzlement. How can we organize the Seder so that the real discussion starts rather than ends with the beginning of the meal? Second, for many people, the Seder tends to be a very child-friendly activity. Maybe one of the reasons why the Seder is the most popular Jewish custom that, that, that exists. And yet, in making the Seder so child-friendly, we often tend to make the Seder childish. How can we make the Seder child-friendly and adult-friendly at the same time? Third, is the function of the Seder for us to try to imagine ourselves as slaves in Egypt, reliving that experience of slavery and freedom? Or, instead of looking backwards at what happened some three and a half thousand years ago, are we each to bring our own personal sto stories, of our own personal sense of what enslaves us, what binds us, and how we redeem ourselves from those things? And finally, the Seder, the Exodus, has been used as a paradigm of liberation movements as varied as the freedom of slaves in the United States, liberation theology throughout Latin America, and the Soviet Jewry movement in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. What elements of the Exodus are universal? What belonging to all of those different movements? And what elements of the Seder, of the Exodus, are truly unique to the Jewish people, to our historical experience coming out of Egypt? Chag Sameach.